Ramadan Kareem and Shabbat Shalom. Welcome. Before I begin, I first want to acknowledge that we are on stolen land. In this town of Fall River, the original stewards are the Pacific Wampanoag people who continue to tend to the land on the first ever reservation here in the U.S., in Fall River, the Watupa Pond Reservation. I would like to thank you all for joining us here tonight to honor and remember the lives of the martyrs that have been killed since October 7, 2023. Our first speaker is Martin Benz, who is the Outreach Coordinator at the Islamic Society of Southeastern Mass. Please welcome him. Assalamu alaikum, which means peace be with you. And that's the peace that we need everywhere in the world. We need it here for ourselves and for our own strength, because uh, we need to be strong for the people who have the least strength in uh, Palestine. They are now in the middle of Ramadan. This is the fifth day of Ramadan, which means we are all fasting. Those of us who are Muslim, and most uh, people in Gaza are Muslim, though there are also Christians. But the Christians are in full solidarity with all the Muslims because they're also Palestinians. They are also uh, suffering under this terrible attack on their land in Gaza and also in the West Bank. So can you imagine, if you were to try to spend uh, the day, as we do as Muslims, starting from an hour and a half before sunrise until just about now, sunset, without any water, with any food, just trying to manage in the day. We're actually privileged here in, in this country. It's not so hard for us. But can you imagine those people in Palestine who are not only fasting during those times from sunrise, to, well, an hour before sunrise and up until sunset, they're not getting anything even after that. They have been blockaded from having any food aid, any humanitarian aid, any medical aid by the Israeli government. And this is, um, cannot be defined by any other word than genocide, because it's a concerted effort to displace people from the land. And so I wish you all to contemplate and maybe even try, maybe in one of these days uh, during Ramadan, try not to fast. Uh, try to fast, I mean, try not to eat during those times. Try to get up an hour and a half before sunrise, have a glass of water, have some dates, maybe some cereal, but then try and last the whole day. And try and see what it's like to wait until the sun actually sets. And then you can imagine the suffering, you can be part of that solidarity with the suffering that the Palestinian people are going through right now. And this is one of our tests. As Muslims, we see that uh, those who are suffering are compensated. This is our belief, that they will be the ones who are the actual victors as far as their future in the afterlife. But it's a test for us to see how strong are we in supporting the people who are suffering. That's also a test for those who are the oppressors because they may not know it, but they also are going to face a day of reckoning, a day of judgment. That's our faith. I'd like to also just take a moment, as I do in most of these vigils, to read a, num a few of the names, just so that we know that these are real human beings with real names. They had real futures. And I'm always, I, the list is over 35,000 names, and that would be a book about this thick. But the Al Jazeera printed one, uh, a list on November 2nd, which was only 6,700 names. And even that would be this thick. Um, and so I was able to print out a few of the names. It's hard to extract to print. But I got the, the names of the 12-year-olds who were, um, had died on, by November 2nd. That's only a, less than a month than after uh, October 7th. 6,700 people had already been martyred in, in Gaza. But to give us an idea of who they are, I just want to read a few of the names, if you'll bear with me. These are all 12-year-olds, and I won't risk the, read the whole list of 12-year-olds, but I want you to know that these are children who got up in the morning, would like to have gone to school, 
would like to have had a future, really wanted to do something in their community. And as so many of the Palestinians, they do. They, they value education, and many of the Palestinians are doctors. There are people who care about other people. So this is, um, this is the name of those children who have that aspiration. Ahmed Hussein Ahmed Astal, 12-year-old boy. Haya Wael Ahmed Alistal, 12-year-old girl. Haddad Mohammed Zakaria Alistal, 12-year-old girl. Malak Bilal Mohammed Asuna, 12-year-old girl. Ahmed Hussam Amin Husana, 12-year-old boy. Wad Mohammed Hussein Al Najjar, 12-year-old girl. Mahmoud Ahmed Saleh Al Najjar, 12-year-old boy. Jamil Fayez Mohammed Al Masri, 12-year-old boy. Mujahid Mohammed Ahmed Al Kurd, 12-year-old boy. Mohammed Walid Ismail Abu Jansar, 12-year-old boy. Mohammed Nasser Hosni Musa, 12-year-old boy. Yamin Ayman Samir Abu Shamala, 12-year-old boy. Rula Mohammed Suleiman Al Nabahin, 12-year-old girl. Mohammed Said Nafal Nafal, 12-year-old boy. Batul Ahmed Saleh Al Dalul, 12-year-old girl. Amr Mustafa Amin Nafal, 12-year-old boy. Mutaz. Bahram Ahmed Al Dalul, 12 year old boy. And you'll notice that um, many of the names that are after the first name that I call, the first name is the identifies the child by their, their gender that was given to them. But um, after that, it's the family. It's the whole family's uh, genealogy that is um, mentioned in the name. So when you hear of a Mohammed Saidi Kista, that's the father and the grandfather and the great-grandfather. So here's Sadi, Mohammed Sadi, Kista, 12-year-old boy. Roa, Mohammed Kamal Hamdan, 12-year-old girl. Maria, Mikhtar, Darwish, Jode, 12-year-old girl. Asmin, Salim, Mohammed Kuda, 12-year-old girl. Aya Hasni, Ahmed, Abu Najjar, 12-year-old girl. Mohammed Mahmoud, Mohammed Ahmed, 12 year old boy. Jana Jihad, Mohammed Awad, 12 year old girl. Rimas, Suleiman Mahmoud, Day, 12 year old girl. Isra, Mohammed Abdul Rahman, Shehab, 12 year old girl. Ahmed Hatim, Mohammed Al Farah, 12 year old boy. Adyan Isam, Taufik Al Farah, 12 year old girl. Yusuf, Yusuf, Saeed Yusuf Al Mutawak, 12 year old boy. Mustafa Shaday Jabr Al Ajrami, 12 year old boy. Ahmed Iyad Ab Muhaysin, 12 year old boy. Ali Jumad Rajab, 12 year old boy. Abdullah Iyad Rajab Saban, 12 year old boy. Abdullah Mahmoud Mahmoud Abu Ayad, 12 year old boy. Abdul Karim Awad, Rajab Tabad, 12 year old boy. Agad, Yasser, Mahdi, Bardawil, 12 year old girl. May Allah bless you for all coming out here, for showing your solidarity, for showing how you do care, you do understand that these are real people that are sacri being sacrificed. And though the words escape on how one can express it. how sad this is that people are being sacrificed in this way. We pray for peace, we pray for hope, we pray for their uh, compensation in heaven from this horrible tragedy, and we pray that we have the strength and the perseverance and the patience to continue to bring this issue forward to our our leaders so that they do finally find a solution to give the peace and real life to the people of Palestine. May Allah bless you, may God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Martin. I really appreciate that. So uh, we'll be present in the break. Yeah, that's good. Of course. Continue, please. Okay. Thank you. My name is Edward Sullivan, and I'm the founder and outreach and education advocate for Bristol Students for Peace. It has been five months and 161 days since October 7th. 32,000 Palestinian lives have been cut short since then, 12,000 of which were children. 73,000 Palestinians and counting have been injured, and there's more than 8,000 Palestinians that are missing. In Judaism, when a person dies, we say, may their memory be a blessing. But when you're being systematically exterminated, who will be left to be blessed by the memories of the dead? That is our goal tonight. With Israel trying to erase Palestine and her people, we stand here and we say, we won't look away, we won't forget, we remember. 161 days ago, Hamas, an extremist Islamic resistance group operating in Gaza, launched a set of attacks against Israel. They used rockets and fighters to raid military bases in civilian neighborhoods. 1,139 people were killed, and Hamas took 250 hostages. A horrific attack. In response, Israel begun an immediate invasion into Gaza, and to this day, indiscriminately bombs them. 360,000 plus homes have been destroyed, hundreds of schools and places of worship, 11 of the 35 hospitals, and not stopping there, Israel bombed bakeries. These bombardments crushed people to death and trapped thousands beneath the rubble who remain missing. Israel has also taken Palestinian hostages and prisoners from Gaza and the occupied West Bank. This is not self-defense. Palestinian civilians have no control or say over Hamas and yet face the brunt of the attacks. Israel's indiscriminate bombing has even killed several of the Israeli hostages they've been trying to set free. This is genocide. Today, 1.5 million Palestinians have been forcibly displaced in the southern town of Rafa, which only encompasses 25 square miles. That's not even half the size of Boston. They live in a city of tents where disease runs rampant. All throughout Gaza, disease spreads and people starve. It is not the bombs that are killing people the fastest now, it's the starvation. They run out of all options. They eat weeds, ground up animal feed, their horses and donkeys and desperately dogs and cats. Through all this, they still asked if it would be haram or forbidden in Islam. It's especially worse in the northern strip of Gaza where thousands of Palestinians are still trapped in. This is not a natural famine, it is man-made. There is food and aid waiting for them at the borders, but Israel refuses to let anything through. The few aid, the few aid trucks able to get in can't make it to the north. And for the Palestinians who do line up at convoys, hungry, starving, and desperate for anything for them and their families, instead of flour, they get shot at by Israeli soldiers. There's been multiple flour massacres since the first on February 29th. Via social media, the starving Palestinians asked for airdrop aid. After weeks of protests and calls to action, the U.S. finally airdropped aid. They were expired MREs, and none of them were halal. To make it worse, Airdrop aid is expensive, inconvenient, and dangerous compared to trucks. Planes hold less aid, there's no proper landing zones, so crates are dropped in the ocean and often float away before people can get them. Some crates have even fell on and killed people. This is genocide. When the International Court of Justice accused Israel of genocide, Israel made up the lie that UNRWA, which is one of the largest organizations that helps refugees in Gaza, since the creation of Israel back in 1948 was part of the October 7 Hamas attack. And instead of doing their due diligence, the US Senate blocked all funding to UNRWA. And recent evidence has shown that Israel allegedly tortured and coerced Palestinian UNRWA staffers to falsely admit the Hamas ties. The US has the power to make Israel open the Gaza borders for aid to get through. You want to know why? Because Israel runs on our wallet. The U.S. has given Israel 260 billion U.S. dollars in combined military and economic aid since World War II. Biden continues to give billions more tax-funded dollars since October 7th to support this genocide. They tell us they have no money for schools, no money for loan forgiveness, <laughs> no money for health care. By the way, Israel has free health care. No money for roads, just no money for the people. But we have all this money for massacres thousands of miles away. When the UN tried to call for an immediate ceasefire, the US blocked it, twice. The US is implicit in this genocide. 
Rafah was claimed to be the last safe zone in Gaza where millions escaped to, and now Israel bombards it, and Egypt refuses to let refugees in unless they pay up to 10,000 US dollars. Egypt is also testing the idea of creating a buffer zone in the middle of the desert. You know what will happen? The people will starve to death. Netanyahu constantly threatens invasion during the month, during the holy month of Ramadan. The Palestinians face death everywhere. Nowhere is safe. There's no water, no food, and no shelter. After the six million lives lost in the Holocaust, we said never again. Zionism has instead turned us, the Jews, into Nazis. Zionism is not Judaism. Neither is the state of Israel. Zionism is a nationalist political ideology created in 19th century Europe. Meanwhile, Judaism has persisted for thousands and thousands of years and will continue to do so. The creation of Zionism has always been about creating an ethno-state. Early writings even detail their plans of exterminating the Palestinians the same way the US tried to destroy the indigenous peoples of America, or by its proper name, Turtle Island. Israel has always been clear about their intentions. We just looked away. Netanyahu and the state of Israel should be ashamed of themselves. They blatantly use Holocaust denial and Nazi ideology to further their own genocide and cry that you're anti-Semitic if you disagree. Shame on you. And shame on every last person rejoicing in the deaths of the Palestinians. Shame on every synagogue supporting Israel. And shame on the US and Joe Biden for supplying Israel with US tax dollars and weaponry despite the protests of his people. We as Jews have a duty to resist these claims, have a duty to resist settler colonial violence done in our name. Judaism demands justice, demands peace, demands that we make this world better. Judaism demands that we love our neighbor and not just the Jewish ones. I want you to remember that all life is precious, that every person has a soul and an intricate world inside of them. Every person has a piece of God inside them. But the Palestinian people have been dehumanized and cruelly wrecked from this world for 76 years too long. Muslim, Christian, Jew, it doesn't matter. Rich or poor, it doesn't matter. Black, white, or brown, it doesn't matter. Palestinian humanity has never mattered to Israel. Not the graduate students with hopes to better their country. Not the young girls who like to draw. Not the fathers trying to feed their families. Not the children who look at their parents in the city of tents and ask, when will we see the beach again? Will we go swimming in the summer? And they try to infect our cultural conscience with the same poison. They know if we give them names, give them voices, that we'll care. And it's evident that despite their constant attempts to poison us, we've opened our eyes to their injustice and lies, and we refuse to look away. We refuse to forget. In our thousands and in our millions, we are all Palestinians. This isn't a vigil for strangers. It is for our family. We all have the same family name, Homo sapiens. Tonight, we graft the branches of all the martyrs to our family tree with our tears to water and watch the branches bloom. We'll hold the memories of every martyr child as if they're our own. We'll remember the love and brightness that every martyr brought to their friends as if we were their friends. We'll dream of a free Palestine as if it's a bar raising. Thank you. I would now like to read a poem by Palestinian martyr Refet Aliyir, who was killed by Israel in December 2023. The poem is titled, If I Must Die. If I must die, you must live to tell my story, to sell my things, to buy a piece of cloth and some strings, to make it white with a long tail, so that a child somewhere in Gaza, while looking heaven in the eye, awaiting his dad who left in a blaze and bid no one farewell, not even to his flesh, not even to himself, sees the kite, my kite you made, flying up above, and thinks for a moment an angel is there. If I must die, let it bring hope. Let it be a tear. Hind Rajab was five years old when an Israeli tank opened fire on a car that she and her six relatives were in. Hind was the only one to survive the attack. She died 12 days later, still trapped in that car because Israeli forces refused to let an ambulance through. 
she is survived by her mother. Mohamed Helez was a law school student one year away from graduating. He was killed in the flower massacre, having never gotten any bread. Sohail Ramez Alsori, 14 years old. Julie Ramez Alsori, 12 years old. Maj Ramez Alsori, 10 years old. And their father took refuge in the oldest church in Gaza, the Church of St. Corpheus, thinking they'd be safe in God's house. An Israeli airstrike on the church killed the three children. Their father survived. He now laments his angels. I would like to read another poem. This one is titled, For Samer Isai, a poem by Susan Abuhawa. Picture of apartheid outlaw, crooked white teeth, Adam's apple and an angled jaw. A beautiful face, knowing smile, gentle eyes in a masculine grace. O oh, native son, my brother, your eyes have sunk in darkness's pain. Sleepless nights crawl on your skin and daylight climbs the links of your rusted prison chain. Religion made a mistake, so your body shrinks and shadows trample your skin while a thousand senators quake. Jerusalem screams in your hallowed belly. She chokes on your mother's tears and shows us her tired dreams. As your body excavates death, the ruin of nations is carved in your palm, and a sorrowful flag holds its breath. You carry your broken frame through the decay of health and death, devastated by your life, hangs its head in shame. You are the prince where the jasmine sings, the bougainvillea prance, and the tyrants wince. Palestine rises from the days they siphon from their veins crutches to steady her gait, while we stir from our days. O oh, native son, my brother, fly over this country your wish and pour the adon from your wings. Let the church bells chime from your smile and the walls fall by your kiss. Our tears will rain in the Wadis flood until another thousand years have sunk in Jerusalem's mud. We will harvest the olives with your name and your heart will forever stake our claim. Aaron Bushnell was a 25-year-old U.S. serviceman who self-immolated in protest of the genocide in Palestine outside the Israeli embassy in Washington, D.C. He was described by his friends as someone who cherished life, that he had an effect on people, that anyone who met him had the fabric of their life changed. I think for many of us, this rings true. I'd like to share a comment he made on his Facebook before his self-immolation. Quote, many of us would like to ask ourselves, what would I do if I was alive during slavery, or the Jim Crow self, or apartheid? What would I do if my country was committing genocide? The answer is, you're doing it, right now. Mohammed al was 24 years old when he was killed by an Israeli sniper for harvesting food. He was described as hardworking. The fruits were to sell to support his family. His wife gave birth two days after he passed. Salma Jabir was four years old when she was shot in the neck on December 5th by Israeli soldiers as she and her family were trying to escape. Even after being shot, she kept running until she succumbed to her injuries. She is survived by her father, Hussein Jabir, an UNRWA photographer. Nada Mohammed al Hasina was a pharmacy student at Palestine University and a talented artist. She was beloved by all who knew her for her sense of humor and lively energy. She wore a necklace of her name all throughout the war, so when she died, people would recognize her. On November 22nd, Nada, her mother, her sister, and many of her other relatives were killed in an Israeli massacre. Nada was identified by her necklace. There are thousands of more names and more stories that I wish I could tell you. I will now be leading us with the Misha Brecha, the prayer for healing for the 73,000 injured and the 8,000 missing and anyone who needs healing in this time. If anyone has a name uh, that they'd like to say, please say it aloud now. Feel free to follow along if you like, there's papers, no pressure or anything.
I will not be seeing them, which is the traditional way, because I'm incredibly nervous. So. Misha Brecha, Abotenu, Makor Habracha, Leimotenu. May the source of strength who bless the ones before us help us find the courage to make our lives a blessing and let us say, Amen. Misha Brecha, Imotenu, Makor Habracha, Laabotenu. Bless those in need of healing with Rafua Shlama, the renewal of body, the renewal of spirit, and let us say, Amen. Lastly, to finish us off, I'd like to lead us with the Mourner's Kaddish in a time of war and violence by Rabbi Arthur Wiskow. If there's a person you're thinking of, please say their name aloud now. Again, don't have to follow along, whatever. Yikadav, Yikadesh, Shemei Rabbah. May the great name through our own expanding awareness and our fuller action lift itself to become still higher and more holy. May our names, along with all the names of all the beings in the universe, live within the great name. May the names of all whom we can no longer touch, but who have touched our hearts and lives, remain alike within our memories and in the great name. May the names of all who have died in violence and war be kept alight in our sight and in the great name, with sorrow that we were not yet able to shape a world in which they would have lived. Amen. Biyama devri hirute biyamich mahute v'chayu yuhun uvi yomehun uvechaye dekod deyed Yisrael v'agala utmen kavi v'yamru. May your great name lift itself still higher and more holy throughout the world that you have offered us a world of majestic, peaceful order that gives life to the God-wrestling folk through time and through eternity. And let's say, Amen. Yahai Shemai Rabbah, Yivra Waha, Lo Alam, Almai, Almaya. So therefore, may the great name be blessed through every mystery and mastery of every universe. Yit Barak, Yishtaba, Yitapar, Varikumam, Yit Nasai, Yit Padar, Yit Alai, Yit Dalol, Shemai, Dikitra, Rechi. May the great name be blessed and celebrated, its beauty honored and raised high. May it be lifted and carried. May its radiance be praised in all its holiness. Blessed be. La'ela min kol brahata di shatir atush bahata benehimata di amrin di ama di amru amen. Even though we cannot give you enough blessing, enough song, enough praise, enough consolation to match what we wish to lay before you. And though we know that today there is no way to console you when among us some who bear your image in our being are slaughtering others who bear your image in our being. Yahai Shlama Rabbah Min Shemaya Bahayim Baholo Kol Yisrael Biyamru Amen. Still we seek with all our spirit, mind, heart, and body that from the unity of your great name flow the dissolving of our ancient and our recent traumas into great harmony and joyful life for all who rest with God. Amen. Osei Shalom Bimi Romav Yisai Shalom Elenu to all call Yisrael, but all call Yishmael, but all call Yishbei to Bel the Emu. Amen. You who make harmony and the ultimate reaches of the universe, teach us to make harmony within ourselves, among ourselves, in peace for the God wrestling folk, the people Yisrael, for our cousins, the children of Hagar and Ishmael, and for all life who dwell on this planet. Amen. Osei Shalom Bimi Romav, who Yisai Shalom Elenu, but all call Yisrael. Amen. Thank you all so much for coming tonight. I know this is a very small get together, and I really appreciate all of you for coming. It means the world to us, and possibly so much more for the Palestinians. In these dark times, we need hope and community to ground us and steady us. Please check out the pamphlets. Um, the resources on there. The Red Crescent Society is the only organization able to get past the borders to the people, so please donate if you can. Uh, Bristol Community College kindly asks that please don't leave any of the memorabilia and please clean up after yourselves. Shabbat Shalom, Ramadan Kareem, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.